SMCI or Super Microcomputers is up by an incredible 250% so far this year. So how much higher is it going to go? Because just here in after hours, we're up by another 3%, which means the stock is absolutely trounced everything so far this year. And now Extreme Greed is back. So what do we do? And uh, this is really incredible because as I think about what this could really mean, Stanley Drunkenmiller told us back in June that says you want to own NVIDIA for the next couple of years amid the AI bullishness. So how much higher could we go? Man, we could go a lot higher. What I want to do is actually zoom out, zoom out here for a moment, and we're going to go to a log scale because what this is going to show us is what happens after a stock actually makes a new all-time high. So if we go back here, we note that only at $40 is when we actually made the new all-time high. And this happened not that long ago. This was only May of 2021. And then it went from 37 all the way up here to 1,000 or 2,500%. That is truly incredible. And what's even more incredible about this is that as I think more about this, and we now look here to a monthly chart, and we pop over here to the S&P 500, this is what I find so incredible is that I think people are getting uncomfortable as we go higher. But look, the S&P only recently made a new all-time high. So how much higher could it go? Man, we've talked about this too. We've talked about how it could go dramatically higher. And I gave you some rough numbers as we looked at this uh, not that long ago. What did we talk about? We talked about comparing 2020 to today. And in 2020, we formed higher lows and higher highs. It lasted for 11 months. We have a one, two, three, four, five pattern. We've talked about this over and over. And uh, it pretty much gives us a target here of 6,200 if we repeat the whole pattern. If all we do is hit the 161 extension, we could go to 5,600 which means there might be a lot more room for the S&P from here. That would be more than 10% from where we are right now. Whoa, right? Yes, whoa. And I think because the bears were getting so vocal as we were right on strong support, and now as this is looking a lot more, uh, as this is looking a lot more probable, we want to pay attention to a closing price for today. Why? The S&P had a record closing price today, not a record high, we can see that here by going to a line chart that this is the highest line we have, the highest dot on the chart. What does that mean? It means blue skies. And as we just talked about on SMCI, uh, we want to talk about how we don't fight the Fed. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit closer so it's easier to see. If you want to follow me, links in the description for my Twitter account. Don't fight the Fed. The Fed has only paused so far, right? A pivot is, sorry, a pause is bullish. A pivot is to be determined. I've talked about how I don't want to see a pivot, at least for now. And then blue skies are bullish. Chips lead mega caps, tech led, uh, tech led spy. So we talked about chips and wow, like I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, I was looking at this thing, I don't know, like hundreds of dollars lower. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's nice. I don't want to buy it because this is not the style of trading that I enjoy anymore. But I got to tell you, something feels really odd here because as we look at other meme stocks, what are they doing? Well, might not really notice it, but they're starting to move off the bottom. We note here that AMC is up by off the low. It's up by about 37%. I know that doesn't seem like the thousand plus percent we were seeing during the meme stock craze, but hey, the stock's back over a billion dollars and uh, it's worth about five, but they lose $3.70 every 12 months. Wow, that's like pretty incredible. Yes, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor too. If you could please consider smashing the thumbs up or subscribing to the channel, I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. So what I really want to go through here is just really talking about why, why and how are we just like so high now? This seems like incredible. And yes, we talked about that on the weekend. This has been the fastest rise, um, right? To, to 5,000 that we've seen on record. So now that we're back into extreme greed, is this really all that bad? Well, we talked about this. We talked about how uh, extreme greed is actually good, right? Greed is good if you watch the movie Wall Street. So extreme uh, greed to fear, fear to greed to fear. And then we were repeating the pattern, but now that we're back above and we've, and we've done it a couple of times now, I think this might be real. And if we're actually going into a new bull market and it's not a bear market, what does that mean? Man, the next couple of years could be tremendous. As we just showed again, one more time here on SMCI. Made a new all-time high at $44. You can barely even see it here, right? It's all the way down, uh, all the way over here. Whoa. Yeah, from 40 up to 1,000. So and when I created this post um, on December 30th, only about six weeks ago, I'm like, man, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time believing this, but this is what the research tells me. So it tells me that 42% in 2020 and 36% would be the target if we match it. I have some assumptions too, though. 
So it's not like uh, I'm Nostradamus. I'm predicting the future with a 30 day money back guarantee. What I say is that I'm assuming that the uptrend holds and we have no lower lows. What proves me wrong? A monthly lower low closing below the low. So what I want to do now is just, just remind you that if we now look here to the, the key dates could drive the market going into tomorrow, um, we had quite a few earnings this week. And again, we can look, look at the price on SPY to know where we are. We're green on the week. So the net effect of all these earnings was bullish. Why? doesn't really matter. Look what happened here. Strong bounce of 490.7. And we talked about how that area was resistance. We talked about 492 and how we didn't actually even get a daily close below it. So what happened? We back tested what used to be resistance and we passed. What does that mean? It's bullish. Oh, so we're pointing up. Yep, we're pointing up on a rocket ship, which uh, has only had one breather or run one red candle. And I'm 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 actually pretty impressed. I'm not gonna lie. This is incredible. And if you remember uh, when we talked about this, I believe it was on the Monday or Tuesday stream. What we talked about was when we slam down to the strong support here, I said there's likely gonna be some fuel to make us move higher. Why? All these short sellers, I do not understand what they are doing, but they seem to be right there back in the trough. Um, like they were back in June of 2022. It's been a long time now, a year and a half. And they're like, screw it. We went long for two weeks. Now time to, now time to short it again. So this is, this, is, uh, this is incredible. And I also find it incredible because we're actually seeing some data, which might mean the Fed needs to cool down a little bit. I'll walk you through that right now. So we got, uh, what did we got yesterday? Let's actually go back in time because we got um, Great Britain going into, uh, sorry, we got Japan technically in recession. We got two negative quarters of contraction. And then we look to today, Great Britain joining the party. So we look here at quarter of a quarter, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.3, which means that Japan and Great Britain are both in recession. And then today we actually got core retail sales, sorry, uh, retail sales and core retail sales, pretty red. I'm um, talking almost 1%. And then also, I tracked this, uh, the GDP has now been revised down to 2.86. We started earlier at about 4.3. Then we went down to, uh, I think it was 3.5 yesterday. And now we're here at 2.86, which means that this is slowly coming down. We're seeing retail sales come down. Some of that steam is coming out of the economy. And at least for now, we're still positive, but the rest of the world, it's already pretty sucky. Um, it's not really done much to stocks, though. If you look here to the Nikkei, uh, very different than the situation over in the UK. But look, this booming, right? It's booming, baby. Whoop. All the way back to where we were in the 1990s. So incredible rip. The Nikkei is booming, which means inflation is actually making it go higher. So with a lot of information to go through, let's start wrapping up. We're back into extreme greed, but this might actually be good. The last catalyst for us is going to be tomorrow when we get PPI. So we're going to get PPI tomorrow. That's the second most important data point of the week. This is all I really care about. Do we hold the weekly higher low? And if we do, do we close green? Which means if we're green tomorrow, we're likely going to be green on the week. Another hollow candle, really bullish. If we do start fading, we could fade as much as about uh, 2% before we even crack a weekly higher low. We would have to drop by, right now, we, we would have to drop by 6.6% .6 in order to form that monthly lower low, which is the only pattern we care about right now. Oh, that's it. That's all we care about. That is it. That's all we care about to make it really simple. And as we continue the story for the next couple of years, because this could be very bullish. There are some chinks in the armor if we look at a one day, but it really just looks like rotation. I'll show you the reason why. If we look here to a one day performance for the S&P, the reason why SPY is actually closing up. Let's actually get in a little bit closer here. I'll spend a few extra minute, minutes on today's video to just briefly get you through it. So S&P is actually closing at a record high. But the NASDAQ is not. The NASDAQ's uh, only on its third best close, close ever. Actually closing a little bit red. Actually, no, sorry, closing green. <laughs> what the hell's going on here, Justin? All right, so the reason why is because we're seeing other groups participate, like RSP, which is up by 1.2% today. The Dow Jones, up by 1%. Financials, up by 1.7, making a new 52-week high and approaching new all-time highs. And then the Russell, oh my goodness, up by 2.7%. This is very constructive because now we're seeing that risk spectrum get pushed further down, which means this is really good. This is looking really nice. And I got one chart here, which might've actually made a new all-time high. Oh my goodness, 17,442. Here we got 17,450. We got a new all-time high on NYA or the New York Stock Exchange. It's joining the club in the blue sky breakout territory. We also note that ARK is up by 2.2% on the day. 
and uh, KRE, our regional banks, are up by 3%. Whoa, this is getting pretty spicy. It is. Even Tesla's up, right? What's going on? Energy is also going up, which means the economy might be stronger than we think. Man, this is uh, getting a little bit euphoric. But as long as we keep seeing higher lows and higher highs with continued strength, we don't want to be the ones who are going to say it's time to hop off the train. I've shown you that Warren Buffett quote plenty of times already. All right, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you on the end of day stream tomorrow. Or uh, maybe you want to subscribe and we'll, we'll give, bring you a video on the weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow.